Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is WQXN966, the founder of the GMRS Linked Network. I have a, I have posted a question on uh, Facebook, uh, asking people if they would like to own a GMRS repeater. I was stirring the pot a little bit and uh, got a lot of responses. Um, I posted, I think, in four or five pages, and I had, when I woke up the next morning, over 80 notifications. Um, I stirred the pot. A lot of people are interested in putting up a GMRS repeater. You know, I, I'm an amateur as well. I don't use the amateur stuff because I'm too busy trying to, to build the network. I'm trying to get the underdog, per se, because, uh, you know, there's a lot of people on GMRS that, uh, you know, want to get into it and realize they don't have the know-how. I should say, they think they don't have the know-how. Um, with the system that I have set up, it's very easy. Um, but they want that almighty repeater. And I was one of them. And when I came to the realization that I don't really give a shit about talking locally, uh, I just want to be on the air talking. Is the reason why I started the network. You know, I moved up to northern Wisconsin not to, uh, about two and a half years ago, and uh, I'm in VHF land. Uh, if you're not on VHF, you really don't really hear too much. There's not very many businesses on it. The amateurs don't play on it. On uh, UHF, that is. And, you know, so when I got up here from Illinois and I had all this darn radio equipment, I couldn't use it. But, uh, so that's why I started the Simplex node, you know. And, uh, yeah, I marketed it. I put it all over uh, different... Uh, repeater listing websites I got banded from my GMRS because of it no I don't even know if that's because of it we won't go there watch the other video um, but I've I've posted uh, you know how to access it and uh, it was up for over a year before I had my first person uh, try to actually use it and uh, it, it surprised me a little bit but uh, the thing was, is what drove them in was hearing the people coming from across the network. Think about it, you know. Yeah, my the hardware IDs. Yeah, I mean, you can have a repeater. And a lot of repeaters sit there and ID in CW. I sure as fuck don't know how to read CW. You know, most GMRS people have no freaking clue how to read CW. Um, some probably don't even realize there's a dang... Um, um, app out there to decode CW. I never took the time to to decode the repeater that was up on Mosinee Hill up in Wausau to see what that thing's ID in. I don't really care. Nobody talked on the dang thing. Um, you know, that was the thing, is, you know, uh, because people want to think way too big for their what they're educated for is what I think the biggest problem is, you know, and they want to try and service other people instead of serving themselves. Uh, you know, I never really cared if somebody else was talking into it. I thought it would be cool to see if somebody else was able to. And once I got my first person using my uh, simplex node is when I wanted to upgrade. But to be honest, I mean, look at the amateur side. Uh, you know, the DMR network, uh, Brandmeister network, they've got over 11,000 hotspots. Over 11,000 hotspots. Guess how many repeaters they have on their network? Just over 3,000. So there's a big difference. People are figuring out. Repeater owners get bitchy. They don't like it when you control their shit. You know, they don't like it when you tie it up when it's meant for personal use. Or, uh, you know, for some stupid, I don't know, uh, you know, there's all kinds of different things out there for repeaters from freaking uh, personal use to, you know, just look them up. All the things repeaters get used for, I don't know. But I want to use my shit to talk about anything and everything. 
could be technical, it could be what I'm doing today, it could be what I made for dinner, you know, what I made for breakfast, I don't give a shit, you know, and, uh, and some people might not like that, <laughs> but, uh, that's what the network is, I mean, we talk about anything and everything, sometimes we talk about what we're doing to improve the network, sometimes we talk about what we're having for dinner. For a while there, we actually had a pretty good run on Sunday mornings of people, and we called it the salv the salivator nut, because we would make people hungry. <laughs> um, being a node owner with the group is a little bit more than just talking on the radio. You get entered into uh, another Facebook group, and it's uh, another community of people. You know, you get into our, our messenger channel, and that's another community of us. We understand sometimes people aren't going to be next to your uh, nodes all the time. Uh, so, you know, that's why we offer another means to be able to communicate with these people, you know. Um, we did have a Zello channel out there, but, uh, nah, fuck it. We turned Facebook Messenger into Zello. Um, we started talking back and forth using the Facebook Messenger. But, uh, you know, as soon as people realize that, the plug and play option is a great option. Once you get into it, you you could ask questions, you could learn, you could watch the videos, um, you know, and get into it. And I'm leaving the door open for people's creativity with these sound cards because you can easily go out and get uh, mobile radios and turn them into repeaters if you really must have an almighty repeater that nobody else talks on. Um, I've, I put up that repeater, I'm sure people have seen the other videos on it, and it, it covers the town, and, you know, like I said, I did research, I did a lot, a lot of research, I've sent out welcome cards when I first got the repeater up, because I had my first user, I wanted to be able to hear them, that piqued my interest a little more, I was perfectly fine with running a simplex node, until I had my first person using it. Now it was time to actually put a duplexer in. But uh, I've put out, I've looked up all of the GMRS license in this area that could get into my repeater with a handheld. I've sent them out welcome cards. I've went out and I've looked up all the businesses that use the UHF spectrum that their um, frequencies were within a few hundred hertz of uh, GMRS and I've went out to them and there's some that have towers that they're not using because their call signs are expired and uh, they're not using it, their radios are off, they got nothing hooked up to the tower and they won't let me. I've went out to farm silos, you know, finding a spot for a repeater that gets a decent amount of coverage is tough. It is very tough. I would recommend get the first steps if you're going to fully just jump into owning a damn repeater is do your homework first. Find a spot for it. You know, make sure you have the funds because if you find a good spot, they're not going to want you to be up there looking like I got over here with, you know. Yeah, they're going to want true stuff and some people can't afford that shit. But uh, you know, so I'm perfectly fine with it. Uh, my one user uh, faded off. Um, he went and now he's on the, uh, on the amateur side there. He got his amateur ticket and he's actually using a lot of the hardware he has, I guess. Uh, but uh, I said Switch picked up two new people. Um, I know one for sure got his GMRS call sign because of the simple fact he heard all of the network traffic. Think about it. My repeater covers maybe four and a half, five miles. He doesn't even know until I told him that there's a repeater in the next county that covers two counties, three counties. He has no idea it's even there. But he knows my little repeater's there. So, you know, I just, I just want people to be smart about it. You know, I'm not saying joining the network is the best thing, but... It brings voices to your area. You know, start out with just the, the little simplex node in the thing, in the box. You know, with the rubber duck. The rubber duck, get rid of it as soon as you can. Um, upgrade to something better. Uh, you know, you can even upgrade yourself to an Eddie Fong antenna outside on a pole 30 feet up in the air. 
and you would be surprised on what kind of range you get um, using that handheld. Um, you know, what I did was I, I went on my uh, profiles, Googled my call sign, seen what, what profiles came up um, with my, my call sign as an affiliate. And because my node voice IDs, people in my area can hear that voice ID and Google my call sign. Um, you know, and then what I did with the, the profile there is I, I added about me. And uh, that might be the thing that got me booted too, is because I was marketing it. He figured out he was onto my tricks. Uh, I put on my my page about me and what was entailed. I had the simplex node. You're more than welcome to talk to the people across the network. You know, if you're within handheld range of me, then great. I would be able to hear you and talk back to you. You know, and that's what happened with uh, my first user. Was he was. He was just inside my coverage range of my handheld because he was running a base. And so I was able to stand out on the back porch and talk to him. Well, that's no fun. But, uh, you know, that's that's my story of it. That's what I've went through. And I, I have a funny suspicion that uh, if the person really wants to put up a repeater, great. Have fun and uh, talk to yourself.